This is an emergency, I beg in urgency This is a serious case The way you're putting work on me Just like a surgeon when you operate that face Yes, hello? Hi, yes, good morning How are you? I'm great, how are you? I am well. Whew. Are you ready for this? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I have a little bit of a nervous breathing going on. I'm sorry. I'm I can hear really it. excited, really nervous. Don't know what to expect. I, I mean, just, 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 expect the, just expect the best. <laughs> okay. Positive energy, positive time. All right. I'm ready. So I'm going to put some Florida water on my hands and we can begin. Okay. Shuffle the cards. Have you gotten a reading by me before? No, I have not. Oh, so I like. Found out you just found out about me? Yes, a co worker and I are always talking about this and, um, you know, just um, those kinds of things. And so she let me know about your page. So I was looking at some of your other readings. Uh -huh. And I was like, I have got to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds funny. I have got to get into this. <laughs> Man, where have you been on my life? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I uh, surprisingly, I've been getting a lot of clap back from uh, this, my style of reading. Uh, this, this, uh, it's it, it's a little too deep for what they say for internet and stuff and. Evidently, I'm making kind of some other uh, uh, readers on YouTube a little upset. That's how they do. They try to keep the real off of, you know, YouTube. But this is what I'm after, so I'm all, I'm all here for it. Well, I'm going to make sure you, I do my best because that's what I am the best. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So, <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so uh, I took liberty of uh, writing down your uh, houses in the, in the, uh, from uh, the order uh, page. Uh, so, just a look. I know you've seen some of the videos. I just like to reiterate it real quick. I do your five. Mm -hmm. I do your five house uh, spread uh, where we uh, discuss what the spirit says in each house uh, in the way of trying to help help remedy the situation or just to inform you. Uh, you can ask for a clarification through any uh, at any time for any house. Uh, the way you ask for a clarification, you're going to ask that particular car and that house the question. I repeat it and I give you the answer by dropping a clarifier card on what, what the spirit is telling me to tell you. Uh, I just ask that you be open with the spirit and enjoy the reading. This is a two-way conversation. You have access to the spirit. Ask the questions you need, okay? Okay. All right. That being said, I'm going to pray over your card, so just give me... Do I have permission to cut your cards? Yes. All right, let's lay down these five cards. First card, one, two, three, four. You, what are you afraid of, lady? You are. Oh my God. You are fearful right about now. Holy shit! I'm gonna put some. Yeah. I'm gonna put some obsidian snowflake on this first card because I need you to get rid of this fear that you got. It's a. It's a habit. They mean like this is some reoccurring shit. So this is a habit. So I'm gonna see what we can do about this. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna start off with your first house. Your first house is ruled by Aries and is governed by Mars. Your first house represents your ego, how you see yourself, your self-image, your self-esteem, just your self-actions. Now, they're telling me to focus more on self-actions in this first house 
because this is where you got your most fear. So you are afraid of something and you are afraid of something emotionally, right? So, but this is a bad habit of yours, meaning that you have never dealt with this fear. Hmm. Mm. So, spirit. So, in this house, you have the eight of water in the upright position. Having the eight of water in the upright position, you're fearful that something is going to bring you down if you allow yourself to care more for this thing, this object, this focal point, than you do everything else. Because this is somewhat of a life path. This is somewhere of a life path. So, I'm just going to give you a scenario. This, don't, this doesn't have to be it. Let's say you're dating somebody. You're dating somebody. You know your potential. But if you decide to take this thing to another step further, you feel like you're going to end up losing your life path. You're going to be arguing with this person. You're going to be fighting with this person. That you're going to put your... get you in. Typically, nine times out of ten, you, you put yourself on the back burner. So this is what this card... This is what Spirit and this card is saying to me. Like, on, on the surface, you can roll. On the top of this ocean, you are sailing... You can do whatever you want to do. You're confident. But you get a fear base when you think about all of the secrets, all of the emotional attachment that comes with you being a driving force for what you want to do in life. Am I making any kind of sense to you? Perfect sense. Now. My heart is racing. Say that one more time. You're making perfect sense. My heart is racing right now. A lot of things are coming to mind, but I think I have it pinpointed to one thing. Okay. In particular. So now, would you like to ask this card a question? <clears throat> okay. I don't know how I would formulate this. If this is about ego and self, I think I'm, I'm just having a hard time making the connection with, um, like, me, myself. Because it's a very external goal. Like, what I'm pursuing in my career is a very external thing. But as far as, like, those, those, those secrets and things, the low self-esteem and those things you mentioned that were never dealt with, um, I, I think I'm having a hard time saying what the bridge is between the two. The bridge is, so ask the spirit, what's the bridge? Okay, what is the bridge? Spirit, what is the bridge? Merge this for it says, see the other person's point of view. So the bridge is desire. What you desire and what the other person desires are not lining up. You following me now? Yeah. That's your bridge, desire. So the other person desires one thing for you. You desire one thing for you. And no way in hell are those two desires going to match up. One is more selfish, while the other is more selfless. Is it a, sorry, can I ask another question? Yes. Is it a timing thing? Is it an issue of different seasons and different Perfect. changes through life? Perfect. You are 100% educated. I love this reading here so far. I am mm. enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Is it a timing thing? Is it a timing issue? Is it a timing issue revealed? Is it a timing issue? Oh my God. Yes, it is a timing issue to the point where you're going to have to let this person go. You're going to have to let this, this hindrance. I ain't going to say it's a person because it also could be a multiple group. You're going to have to let this hindrance go in the future when you fully make that decision. So uh, let me rule it back a little bit for you. You can't go no further than what you can go with these hindrances stopping you and causing you to second guess yourself. Because what you want, you need to be all, you need to be full steam ahead. Wow. Makes sense. Mm. Yeah, okay. All right. So now we're going to go to your second card, which is in your third house. Your third house is ruled by Gemini and it's governed by Mercury. Your third house represents communication. With Gemini being in this house, it's, it's like the luck of the draw on how the communication will come. You can get good communication, you can get bad communication. 
but spirit is telling me it works to the same purpose. It, it works to invoke a reaction, good or bad. The good, uh, a bad reaction will permeate towards a goal. The good reaction will permeate towards the same goal. So in this house right here, you have the salamander in the upside down position. When it comes to communication, they say you're not taking in any usable information from anybody. So you don't have a fire in your belly. So the stuff people are saying, you're just flicking it off. You're not utilizing it as a fire in your belly, as a something to, to go on, to grow on, to feed off of. You're not feeding off no communication, good or bad. You're just listening to people say, it ain't going to work. And you'd be like, okay, it ain't going to work. Or if somebody was to come up to you and say, this, you got this, you'd be like, yeah, I, I might do. You're just so not perceptive at all. And here it is, you have the salamander who, the, the motherfucker that controls fire, that controls ambition, that controls all of this. You just there. You're not utilizing it. Am I making any sense to you? Yes. Now, I think you need to ask this card a question. So is that to say that the ones closest to me are not speaking like life, let's say, into these different pursuits or ambitions or am I getting it from the wrong people? What exactly is the communication flaw? What is the communication flaw? Why? What is going on with the salamander? What is the communication flaw that she can't be fed, that she can't see, she can't hear, she can't taste, she can't enact upon? What is the flaw? Where is the ball being dropped? It says let it go. So the ball is being dropped because you are refusing to untether yourself uh, from a physical situation. So the ball is being dropped because you you don't want to untether yourself from a physical situation. Now, what is this physical situation, Spirit, that she got to let go? The physical situation, they're saying that you, that, that reason why you don't want to hear now, you're valuing a lifestyle, a circumstance. You follow me? So you're valuing a a a certain lifestyle, a very you're valuing a lifestyle that you've created for yourself, and this lifestyle has become your persona, your identity. So you're valuing it. So you don't want anything to disrupt it. They they put me in the mind of like New Jersey housewives that, that goes with mafia style guys. They dress up, they nice, they have a lifestyle, they have a certain way they're supposed to act according to the these particular rules. So they don't hear anything that's going on around them other than they're just living out the same lifestyle they was forced or perceived to, to act upon. You follow me so far? I do follow you, but I, get, I wonder if I could ask another question because it gets a little jumbled up. Okay. Because there's the religion that I grew up in, the... Um, the Christian religion that I grew up in, and then there's the African spirituality that I'm pursuing in my adult life, and the seeking clarity from the history and the cultural standpoint, but also want to be present in a worldly and relevant way. So I'm not exactly sure, because um, I don't consider myself like a materialistic or like, you know, that kind of lifestyle pursuit kind of person. So I'm just wondering, I, I don't. My phone phone that has like a no, no, no. Lifestyle that I hold on to. No, 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 no. I, and I didn't mean to, to say, to make you think about materialistic. When I say a lifestyle that you're supposed to be holding on to, you, you called it on yourself. This is the Christian-based style. You grew up 100% Christian. Now you're starting to realize and uncover the truth, and it's going into the Yoruba practice the African spiritual practice. Now you're saying, I've been Christian all my life. If I go this way, I'm gonna lose these people that has a Christian sense. The timing is supposed to be, you gotta let that particular thing go in order to get to the next level because it's gonna be beneficial for you. 
So it's not materialized. It's not materialistic things. It's not a materialistic persona. It's more of, as you say, it's an emotional style spiritual. Mm, okay. The community I just, I'm used to. Correct. Okay, um, I, I utilize I utilize the Italian mafia style of doing things, the Italian housewife, because no matter what the husband does, whether right or wrong, the wife is forced to be in that due to status, circumstance, and situation. No matter how you see Christianity as a crutch, a hindrance, or nothing, you're forced to be in that situation. Because this is the belief structure that you're, so this is the role you're supposed to play. So did, you have to break that persona, that attachment to that persona in oh, order to okay. get to where you it. need to I be. Something just came like a flash, I got it. Gotcha. Yeah, All right. okay. So you got that one? Yes, sir. All right. So now we're gonna go into your fourth house. Your fourth house is ruled by cancer and is governed by the moon. Your fourth house uh, represent your house and your home, the four walls you live in, or I would like to say the three closest people you will allow to live in your home, friends, family. And in this house, you have the eight of fire in the upside down position. Now, having the eight of fire in the upside down position in your house and home, that says there's no life going on here. There's no communication. There's no life. There's nothing going on here. There's no correspondence. It's just like everybody is walking around afraid to even discuss anything. It's, I mean, wow. It used to be talkative times. There's no conversation going on in your house. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's nothing but clouds. There's nothing but puffing, huffing, puffing. Like, it's like people like, it's like noise is being made. That's it. No real, no real getting to the root of the problem. No real discussion. It's just huffing and puffing being made in here. There's no energy in this house whatsoever when it comes to this topic. No energy meaning it's not good and it's not bad. It's just nothing. It's just that everybody is afraid to communicate about it. That's where no energy is coming from. No energy is still energy and it's dead energy. You don't want to discuss it with them. They don't want to discuss it with you. On your end is fear based. On their end is anger based. And nobody wants to upset anybody because nobody wants anybody to leave. Am I making any sense? Um, yes, I have a question. Will this issue resolve itself with time? Or does it have to be attacked head on? Spirit, will this issue resolve itself? Past, but will it issue it amount to anything? Right. Will this issue reserve itself in time or does it need to be tackled head on? Is it a head on tackle? It says focus upon your strength. Focus it upon your strength, meaning you have the ability to really ignore people. You can you can ignore somebody like it ain't nobody's business. My lord, shit. You talk about cold shoulders. Wow. <laughs> God damn. So they saying just ignore it. They say it'll 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 say this right here will will if it don't come out in the wash, it'll damn sure come out in the rinse. Hmm. Now, is this immediate family, or is this my husband? Is this the future kids I'm having right now? Is this my my immediate family? Because I'm not someone that considers you family just because you share blood. If you don't really talk like that, I pretty much leave you alone. Um, it doesn't mean the ones that are already close to me that we have unresolved issues because I, I don't feel like that's the case. Is it fa is it family, husband, future child? Family, husband, future child. It says come out the closet. Oh, wow. 
So you keeping this a secret from hubby? No, 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 no. Because I had um, situations with other family members, like my nuclear family, mom, you know, mom, dad, siblings, blah, 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 blah. But that's what I'm saying, because me and my husband are great, so I don't see that it's there um, with what you're saying with he and I. So is it um, past relationships that I thought I had dealt with, but it's just laying there dormant? No, that's it's, that I can think of. it says come out of the closet. So that means this is the one thing you're hiding. You're hiding this. And if you're not hiding it from hubby, then you're hiding it from family. Because when you talk about husband, mother, wife, and all, daddy and all that stuff there, all that comes in the same because you all join the same family once married. Uh, so it says you're hiding it from somebody. I mean, when I say you're hiding it, it's like out of sight, out of mind style of hiding. So if I would say anything, I would say mom and dad. Something from childhood? Uh, it, I, I don't know if it's childhood. It says mom and dad style energy. You're hiding, you're hiding your 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 religious belief structure. You're hiding it. So let's say if if you know they're gonna follow you on social media and you post a picture of about a crystal, you make sure that they're not your social media friends. Oh. Uh. So it says come out of the closet. So now your best bet is to allow this to be exposed. Remember, if it don't come out in the wash, it'll come out in the rinse. If they can't take it right now, while the time while time and, and, and turbulence beat on their ass a little bit, when it's time to accept you, the baby, all that stuff that's coming, it'll come out. They have to accept it. So this is family. This is current, recent, mom, dad, brother, sister energy. Okay. Because I would want, I'm like, why is she hiding this from the husband? He's going to see every time she pick up a stone. He's going to see every time she burn a candle, light an incense. <laughs> That's what I'm saying to you. Yeah, so. It, it could have been secret if I wanted it. <laughs> yeah, so you can't be hiding from him, but your family is not there for you to see, for them to see you pick up a stone or incense. You have the ability to, mm -hmm. to conceal it. But they say the more you conceal it, the more time it's going to take for it to wash out. So just let it be known. Don't flaunt it. Let it be known that this is your belief or this is what, what area you're going into. And then they'll have to accept it one way or the other because flesh and blood is ten times stronger than any kind of hatred or malice, emotion. Okay. Got it? Yeah. All right. So now we're going to your eighth house. Your eighth house is ruled by Scorpio and is governed by Mars and Pluto. Your eighth house represents your subconscious mind. What it is you think about. What it is that you're trying to manifest. What it is that you want to become. Uh, so in your eighth house, um, <laughs> your subconscious mind, what you think about, you have the... Dwarves in the gnomes in the upright position. Having the dwarves in the gnomes in the upright position tells me that you you have the desire to sit amongst stars. You have the desire to sit amongst, not stars, they say you have the desire to sit amongst your ancestors. You want to be, yeah. I'm freaking out here because you want to be a conduit from your ancestors to speak through you to them. Yes. Yes. But here, yes. here, he, yes. here is the thing, right? Here is the thing. You need to create the best ancestor altar you can. And out of all the altars you will ever create in your life, you make sure this ancestor altar is the most beautiful, the most well-kept, the most manicured. Because unlike most spiritual readers and gifted people, your ancestors will tell you everything that's going on with every single person you want them to. 
you, surprisingly, your family is a very social family. Even transcending throughout time, you guys was in the know. You guys was hierarchies. And they're saying, why haven't you became to the point where you're in the hierarchy phase, where you're aristocratic yet? What's stopping you from being in an aristocratic setting? Because they're... Visibility. Say what now? Visibility. Oh, not there. there's a disability involved. Okay. So... No, 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 no. With a V. V is in Victor. Visibility. Oh, visibility. Because I've been saying... I don't... Yeah. Okay. So, visibility. They want... So, why are you cloaking yourself? you saying visibility. So, the reason why you haven't hit an aristocratic setting yet in your physical life due to visibility? Are you invisible? <laughs> I'm not invisible. <laughs> I'm saying there's a withholding for me because of because I know myself and my energy and how I interact with others. I don't just be at every party. I don't just be at every function. But the ones that are close, you know, they're the closest. Like you would think they were blood. But as far as um, opening up to, I don't know, to touch others, to help others, to heal others, to love on others, um, I'm a little standoffish because that would require a little bit of opening up on my part. And I don't know that my own wounds are healed to the point where I would be able to be vulnerable in that way. So that is what I would like. That's my desire. Well, they're saying that they're saying that if this is your dream and you're calling them in, you're going to have to take the necessary steps to break this shit because they're going to feed you so much. You, you're gonna, they're going to open so many doors for you. They're going to place you amongst princes. They're going to place you in a situation where you never thought you'd be in because this is where your family energy is from. The degrade, the downgrade from the family and all that stuff to where you guys at. And you guys aren't suffering at all on the, on the, uh, on the notoriety scale in the community. But you guys was the aristocrats in the past. Not it, It's rare you meet a generational bloodline spiritually where everybody was aristocratic. There was nobody coming from the coming from the staples, landing the landing the spot as an earl. You, I mean, this shit. You guys was born into a aristocratic. I ain't gonna say you guys were born kings and queens and prophets and shit. You guys was born into an aristocratic society. It dinner is it downgraded over time, but all of these aristocratic ancestors that sits amongst the stars and the planets, this is where you need to be at. So get there. Okay, can I say something? Go ahead. This is my issue because the way the way I see it, it has downgraded over time, like you said, because it's like damn near impossible to awaken these people to the to the regalness, to the royalty of their ancestral heritage. I feel like religion has done a number on our people's minds. And I'll start saying these things, it's like, okay, but the blood of Jesus, okay. But it's just like, you can't wipe away everything that I'm saying because of, and I'm not here to downplay your religion either, by all means, read the Bible, boo -boo, but I'm just trying to say, so long as you um, value this that was handed to you over that which has been in your blood, for generations, you will not see yourself the way you ought to be. So I don't know if I'm frustrating myself by trying to bring others along, or if it's something for me to just walk out and live and have others come to me. But what you're saying right now, I have it has been heightened like the past few months since this has been awakened in me of how how dare they teach us lies and how dare they handle right. these things and our people. You know what I mean? We just take it to the next damn level where we don't even know where we came from anymore. So I don't even know how to go about that. It's sickening. So now, make that your question to your ancestors because you have a direct link to them right now. Even though you're clouded and yeah. fearful, ask the ancestors right now. Let's see which one wants to come through and talk. That's my ability. My ability is to connect. Okay. What is the purpose of my work in enlightening myself and enlightening others? They say they didn't understand that. You didn't formulate that correctly. Slow down and say it again. Think before you speak on this question because you got 32 okay. of them sitting right here waiting to talk to you. Okay. Give me one second.
how do I go about tapping into that which is there? Okay. How do I go about it? How do how does she go about tapping into the energies that surround her at the time they surround her? Make sense? Yeah. How did she go about it, y'all? How did she go about tapping into the energy that's around her when she needs to? It says you have to do yoga and mantras. So they say you have to do yogas and mantras. Give me more. Yoga and mantra. How did she tap? Peace offering, yogas and mantras. You have to sing and dance in front of your ancestor altar after you give them an alt after you get them an altering. What else? Give me one more. And it says father, husband, brother, son. Now you need to, you do you do better with the male energy of you do better with the male energies of your ancestors uh, from your father's side. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. So the I mean most people when they look for their ancestors they go to their mother's side. Do you need to look up you need to look up your ancestors from your father's side? This is the most regal of them all. So, so every so everybody got two parents, right? Yeah. Everybody got two parents. Your mother has her ancestors. Your father has his ancestors, right? Right. Your father's ancestors is the one with the with the majority of the regal royal uh, aristocratic bloodline. Your mother energy. Your mother's is the your mother's ancestor is the more along the side of the the servants, the maids, but still aristocratic setting. Hmm. Hard to take in, right? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, because you never. I would find them more. I would find them more accessible, um, as I don't keep contact with my father's side. Okay. And I think it was like going to his place to get any kind of insight into who he is or who his people were, you know. Well, but then, that's that's yeah, how it typically ahead, is. Sorry. That's how it typically is. That's why we we connect to the feminine side of the the ancestral energy first, but the masculine side. Because keep in mind, back in the day, the masculine ruled the world. Although it was a matriarchal exactly. society to start, the fathers, the women, chose the men. So it was the father who was in the aristocratic setting. So you need to get back into touch with your father's ancestors. Now, here is the trade-off. The age 32 keeps coming up. Research your family history, whichever... My husband is 32. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. But he out of this. I'm sorry. He in his own little ancestor around. This is your ancestor <laughs> okay. around. Hi, husband. So listen, the ancestor that passed away at 32 years old, female from your daddy's side, do your research. This is the female energy you're going to utilize. I hope you're writing this down. Yeah. A female, she passed away at 32. They're not telling me what era, what time frame she passed away at 32. She is from your father's lineage, your father's side. This ancestor is the one who you will use to conversate with the rest. You got some. Has she been accessible to me all the while? She has been the main one around you. This 32-year-old female has been around you the whole time and you're thinking it's from your mama's side when it's from your daddy's side. Maybe it's maybe it's a, 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 a auntie from one of your daddy's great-great-uncles. You know, something along that line. But this is a female not married into the family, born of your daddy's DNA blood from ancestral. She is just circling the wagons around you. I thought it was 32 spirits of your ancestors around you, but then she corrected, no, it's just me and I'm 32. So this is the one to whom 
Um, I will meditate and do yoga, offer peace offerings. Correct. And dance and sing and access oh. her in those creative ways. That's right. But you got to do some research, archive, and learn her name. You got to learn their name. I was just going to ask you if I have to call her by name. Oh, my God. Yes, you got to learn her name. You got to do your research. You got to learn you got to learn her name. Surprisingly, there she they make it a little easy for you. She had a sister that was very that was born very close. They was either twins or they was like less than 6 months apart in age. So, okay, my dad was a twin and they say it skips a generation. Okay. Okay, the spirits are talking. You got to develop them, okay? Yeah. Mhm. Mm All right. So you get you full. You good. You good with that house? Um. Yes. Yes, I am. All right. So now we're gonna go to your ninth house in your fifth and final card. Your your ninth house is ruled by Sagittarius and is governed by Jupiter. Your ninth house uh, represent what will become reality, the future. Uh, you know, future mindset and all that. And in this house right here, you have the two of earth in the upright position. Having the two of earth in the upright position, this tells me that you are you are about to take a sabbatical. When I say a sabbatical, you're finna start wearing this head wrap shit. You're finna start doing a lot of meditation, spending a lot of time alone. You're, you're just about to get in contact with your dual self. Now, I, I, people, I don't, people tend to misunderstand if, if they do get to this point in spirituality, when they get to deal with their dual self, people think it means the masculine side and the feminine side. This is not what dual means when it comes to spirituality, from what I, it's been explained to me. When you're getting in contact with your dual self, that means you're getting in contact with not your direct opposite like that, but they said you're getting in contact with the double portion of yourself. So imagine doubling up. You're using your left hand. You, I mean, you're using your right hand to lift weights. Now you're finna get in contact when you could use your left hand at the same time. That's the dual mm, self. Okay. You're not gonna be using your 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 right hand looking in the mirror and imagining it's your left hand. You're gonna start using both hands together simultaneously. That's not to say you're polar opposite. That is your dual. Side by side, no mirror. You know that you're that you can step Spirit says explain it like this. Using your getting in contact with your dual self, you're gonna step outside yourself. So you're gonna create two. You're gonna split down the middle. Pop. Both of neither one will be positive, neither one neither one will be negative. Neither one will be feminine, neither one will be masculine. It will be a double duplicate of yourself to which you will learn how to merge to a triangle point to create and to govern whatever you need to govern. I hope I'm making sense. You are making sense. Does that refer to my physical being, my spiritual, my soul? Like, does that involve something into different dimensions? What does that entail exactly? That entails, that only entails of you linking the two energies that's involved. Again, we're not talking about the feminine energy or the masculine energy. This is an energy that no, that not too many people understand, but your ancestors understood this. That's what made y'all aristocratic. Think of, think of Saint Germain. Think of the, the immortal Saint Germain when you think about this and it should try to channel him as well. And you'll get a lot more take from him. So, if I was to split myself into two different people, I'm the Baron and then I'm E. The Baron and E are the same exact person, just we do different jobs, different paths. One is a spiritual sense, one is a physical sense. Now, if I say, hey, if the Baron say, hey E, I'm gonna meet you at that point at six o'clock in the morning, I need you to be there. I'm gonna say, okay, Baron, I will be there, but I need you to be there as well. We come to an agreement that we both gonna meet there. Once we meet there, at that point, we supposed to open up a dimensional rift. We supposed to open up a channel of communication. We supposed to be there to pick up something. We're supposed to be there to fix something. We're supposed to be there to with a purpose and a decision 
to, to make a, make a, a decision together. And what the dual right. self, what whatever the dual energy thinks should be, the universe listens. Because there's no distraction. There's no, there's no doubt. There's nothing. It's all about my spiritual wants this to happen. My physical is ready to make this happen. Dual self come together. Wonder twins unite. Mm, okay. You follow okay. me? I follow. Okay. All right. Now, would you now, like... Would that require... oh, sorry, go no, I'm going to say, would you like to ask this card a question? Yes, absolutely. So, um, as far as... So, we have a... I don't know any other way to articulate it. This with words, um, the fact that I read it in the church, but we have the physical body, um, the spirit, the spirit and the soul. So mm -hmm. is that going to require? So the um, picture that you drew with looking with your right hand and your left hand being, you know, just laying there. Mm -hmm. um, we're at this with these physical things, but I don't feel as robust and as aware and as alert and as sensitive in the spiritual things. So what is my work in, in building that up? So what is your work in building your physical up to match your spiritual? No, the other way around. What is the, what is the, the, the building your spiritual to match your physical? Yes. The strength and the sensitivity and the awareness in my spirit. Hmm. Earth magic, spiral circle. Earth magic, spiral circle, aborigines. Why am I seeing the original man? The original man. So to build to build yourself up, to build your 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 physical I mean your spiritual to match your physical, that's why now I'm seeing why they say you need to get with the dual man. You need to get with lifting both at the same time. Now I'm understanding. That that being said, in order to do that, you just have to spiral circle. What are you? They're saying you just have to, you have to go through the motions. You have to go through the motion. So do me a favor. Try to walk around in circles. Don't get dizzy. Like, find you a nice spot. Create an imaginary line. And you walk in circles. Try to walk in circles. Walk in circles. And every time you walk in circles, when you come back to that point, you're going to tell your physical to grow. Every time you come back to a set point on that circle, grow. And you're going to be talking to your physical, you're going to tell them to grow. And it's like exercising. Grow. 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 This is how you get it. You got to command your spiritual to be just as strong as your physical. But that, but I want you to understand, you're not, physic, you're not spiritually weaker than your physical. You're just drawing it in like a winding uh, cylinder drawing that spiritual into the physical body so that you will be able to understand it more. So grow, grow, grow. So you're just saying connect, connect, unite, connect, unite, elevate. You know what I'm saying? So it's a joint effort then. They're not, it's not as if they're independent of each other. No, they're not independent of each other. They're just on two different ends of the spectrum that needs to come together to unite at a single point. And you just have to make sure you you pull your spirit up to connect with them. It'll come to you. I can I can see it, but it's very hard to explain. I think I get it. Um, this is a silly question, but I have to ask: Does the advent of psychedelics have anything to do with this? I've been drinking a lot of mugwort tea lately, and my dreams have been really trippy. But I don't think it's any useful information in there. So I just wonder if this whole opening your third eye thing is like a gateway to where, you know, certain people only reach that level because they, you know, do such things. Nope. 
Let me tell you something about opening your third eye and drinking uh, any kind of narcotics or anything, uh, anything ex extra to get your third eye open. It's not, and it's mm -hmm. not, a, it's not important to drink that stuff or, or anything. You have the ability to decalcify your third eye just by commanding it to be decalcified. It's great. Wow. It's great to take a psychedelic hallucinogenic to do it, but you shouldn't. Now, if you have to take any type of psychedelic hallucinogenic, uh, what you need to do is look at, uh, try to try to go to this honey that makes you high. I'm gonna, I gave it to another guy. He was literally taking LSD in order to connect to the to to the universe, and I'm like, dude, that's a tainted that's a tainted method. So there's this honey that grows probably once a type of year. These bees these bees get this some some kind of pollen that makes them high, and they create this honey. It's sold online too, and it's like high honey. Get some of that and take a spoonful of that when you want to get into your meditative state. It's all natural, no side effects, and it'll get you where you need to go. You said it's called high honey? I call it high honey, not the honey dipped in cannabis. None of that shit. This is naturally, bees produce this. This is not a man-made substance. You're going to have to find this on the internet. It grows on the side of a mountain. People are losing their lives to go and, 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 and collect this shit. So this is potent. Mm, okay. You take it right then and there, and you get high, and you go on your psychedelic trip there. No residue. Okay, so I will go ahead and look into that. And I think also the artificial weed, I'll probably have to stop that too. Yes. I live in Colorado. These dispensaries, I don't think they're doing anything for me. Nah, nah, let, let that stuff go. The Mago tea and all that stuff, let it go. Just, uh, just, yeah, just. Okay. Yeah, I've been doing it all wrong. Just, just let your, just let your will, uh, decalcify your, your pineal gland. Okay. Okay. And then I have to ask you, um, not to hang up on this, but, or not to be hung up on this, I mean, but I have been upset with getting in touch with my ancestors out of the way and I'll try to speak with, you know, people about it. I mentioned this to my mom and I was left out of the room. It's just like, um, I feel like we're so far removed from our ancient, practices that that's laughable now that we have you know these different religions but i feel like in my soul and in the belly of my spirit the missing link between where i am now and where i need to be is because i do not have that communication so is there i don't want to say like a timeline but is it just a process if i start now is it like an open thing for me to just go ahead and walk into communication with us well they say that if you start now, you instantly connect. There, that's the thing with you. You have no limiters. You have no hesitance. Just do it. They're there. Just do it. Just close your eyes. You can do it right now. Close your eyes and say, download. Say some funny, come up with a funny word like Wonder Twins activate. Matter of fact, let that be your, let that be your catchphrase. Wonder Twins, Wonder activate. Twins activate and close your eyes, get in your meditative state. Wonder Twins activate. You're going to start seeing stars and shit, stars and moving really fast because I just saw them when I tapped into your mind. It's going to download instantly. You got instant access. This is your job. This is your job to connect. You're just doing your purpose. Wonder Twins activate. That's it. Yeah, it sounds funny, but shit, there's truth in everything. <laughs> no, I dig it. <laughs> I dig it. One of the Wonder Twins formed in the water or a form of water all the time. The other one formed into an earth-based creature. There you go. You got spirit and then you got physical. Wonder Twins activate. Powers unite. Form of water. Form of an eagle. Wow, now you just made a, a, a you just came to communicate with this ancestor. One to twenty powers activate. Form of ice. Form of a polar bear. Now you come up to something how you could break the exterior of uh, an emotional block. You find me. You follow me here. Yeah. All right. Spirit yeah. say that's enough. You gotta. I can't figure this out for you.
<laughs> no, I'm looking at this shelf in my room now, thinking how I'm going to get my altar together together tonight. I have to order a lot. i got a few things. So let me jump on this now that it's a little more clear to me after this reading. All right. Woo. This is amazing. Thank you so much. No problem. You have a good one. God bless and you know how to get in contact with me. Yes, sir. I will be calling you again. All right. You have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Oh, wow. Everybody, that was a really long reading. Nice reading. I wasn't expecting to go that far, but Spirit had something to say. And Spirit, her ancestors need her to be up to 100% par because they got a lot to deliver to her. Uh, don't be surprised if you get another reading. And this lady is in an aristocratic setting, politics. Uh, she's in a setting with stars and, and stuff like that. It's, it's going to happen. They just got a download to her and she was just being blocked with the whole not believing in herself thing. But again, thank you guys for watching this, this video. Like, click, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Positive comments, encouraging her to keep going further. Uh, I'm the Baron telling you guys to trust the UN universe because at the end of the day, you all you got to take care. God bless. Much love.